Welcome to GeForce, everybody. My name is Petra, and I am so excited that you guys are joining me today. Now, I want to talk to you guys that some, about something that is super important to us here at church, and that is laugh. Here at church, we love to laugh and, and have fun, but we spell it a little bit differently, so don't spell it like this on any of your spelling tests. We spell it L, A, and F, and that's because each letter stands for something that is really important to us. The L stands for love because we wanna love others just like Jesus loves us. Now that doesn't mean we just tell people I love you. Love is actually an action. It's something that you do to show others that you love them. Go and give your mom a hug, or maybe you spend some of your time helping one of your siblings with their homework. That is showing people that you love them. The second letter is A, and the A stands for accept. Now, no one in the world is exactly the same. God made everyone unique and special. And so because no one's the same, we need to learn to accept each other for our differences because God made everyone so special. And the last letter is F. Now, I don't know what you guys, but I make mistakes. And I know you guys probably make them too. And the important thing about when we make mistakes is that we learn to forgive each other. And that's what the F stands for. It stands for forgive. And we forgive each other because we love each other. Now, we're gonna get started with my favorite part of service. So I need everybody to stand up really tall and get ready to sing and praise and worship God with me. Raise the game. Come on, raise the game. Are you ready? He gives us everything we could ever need To love the world around us To be a light in darkness He's with us every breath He's with us every step So we can leave fear in the dust behind us If you want to raise the game He will give you strength To reach another level in Jesus' name If you want to raise the game He will give you strength To reach another level in Jesus' name We are moving up, moving up We are making it, making it loud We're making it loud
This is my faith, this is my focus, all of my days, I know where my hope is, I live it loud, I shout the chorus, because I know, oh, you're always for us, and even when it's hard for me to see, to see, I will trust in you, I will believe, believe, and even when it's hard for me to see, to see, I will trust in you, I will believe, and keep on looking, looking, looking to you, for where I'm going, knowing you go there too, I'll keep on looking, looking, looking to you, I'll fix my eyes on you. Wow, great job worshiping you guys. I love praise and worship. It is one of my favorite parts of service. Now, it's hard to believe that we've reached the very last week of January. January has flown by. And all month in January, we've been learning about this word called responsibility. Now, responsibility is showing you can be trusted with what's expected of you. Now, with God's help, we can live the responsible way and live the way that God planned for us to live. And God's plan for our life is always the best plan and it's always the plan that we want to follow. Now, if you recall, we've been playing a board game called GeForce Island all month. And today we're gonna get to our final destination, but only if we can win this last game. Now let's take a look and see where we are at. It looks like we're still in the desert. Now, do you guys think you guys can help me win our last game and take us all the way through to the last part of our game so we can win? Awesome. All right. Now, the game that we have to play today is a little game that I like to call Word Scramble. Now, all I need to play this really awesome fun game is a friend. Let's see if we have a friend who wants to play. Hmm, that's weird. Let's try that again. All I need to play this super fun game is a really awesome friend. That's really weird, guys. Where's Joni? She's been playing these games with us all month. She hasn't missed one of them. All right, on the count of three, 
I want us all to yell Joni. Maybe if she hears us, she'll come and play. Ready? One, two, three. Joni! Hi guys, I'm here. I just came in from outer space. Wow, what a nice space suit you've got on. I know, it's so nice. Well, thanks for coming to play with us all the way from outer space. It's our last game. Okay, are you? Are, I'm gonna win this one though, right? I mean, I guess we'll see. The way this game works is there's gonna be some words that pop up on the screen, but these words are all scrambled together. So we're gonna see who can unscramble the most words. Whoever unscrambles the most words wins. So in order for G-Force to win, we need to get more words right than Joni does. Do you guys think you can help me get the most words right? Okay. Joni, does that make sense? It does, yeah. All right, let's get started. I'm gonna go first. So let's take a look at my first word. All right. Hmm. I think maybe this one is pencil? I don't know. Oh, I got it right. Oh, I got it right. Oh, oh my goodness. Okay. okay, let's take a look at Joni's first word. And keep in mind, Joni, you only have 10 seconds to answer, okay? Okay, okay, okay. I got it. Okay, let's go. Mmm, R O O P and C P. Cooperoo. Cooperoo. Rooper, rooper, coop. Cooperoo. Rooper. Oh, time's up. What? I Let's see what it was. Time. Let's see what it was. It was popcorn. Popcorn? Popcorn. Out of that. Out of that. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, all fine. right. Next one I'll get. Let's take a look at my second word. Okay. Um, Sinakapa. That's, that almost sounds like something that can be. Snack? Nak, nakpunk, nipa. Oh, okay, my time's up. Let's take a look at what my word was. Okay, it was pancake. Pancake? Pancake. Wow, kind of snack, <laughs> right? Well, I mean, not really though. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty far off. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at Joni's next word. Okay. Seer rare 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 Okay, um, is it sh Oh, sheep? I got it right! Okay, oh, I've got two right. I need to catch up. Joni doesn't have very many right, but it's okay. You, we've got a few more words. Are you ready, to, are you ready for your third word? I'm ready. You're okay. ready? Yep. Okay, let's take a look at Joni's third word. Riamurf. Riamurf? Frame, frame. Mm, I mean, too many letters. Framer, Fr farmer. Yeah, yes! that's oh, right. Oh Jody, you got it right. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Joni's got one. I've got two. Let's see if I can get one more. All right. Let's take a look at my last word. Okay. Could it be kit kitten? No, there's no n. Um, tyke. Ticket? Is it ticket? Oh, oh, I got it right! I got three right! Okay, Joni, let's take a look at your last word. Okay, okay you ready? Mm -hmm. Here it is. Know me. Know me. Know me. Me? Me. Okay, I think your Monkey. time. Oh. <gasps> right and g-force got three right that means that g-force won but joni you did a really good job you still got two right i guess that's true <laughs> well thanks so much for playing with us here at g-force we've enjoyed having you all month now do you have to get back to space i do i gotta go i gotta run i'll see you guys bye bye joni wow 
That was so much fun. Let's take a look at where we've landed now in our board game. Oh, we've gotten to the oasis. We moved out of the desert and we moved into the oasis. And that means that we've actually won our board game. Now, I have loved playing this board game with you guys all month. Thank you guys so much for playing along with me, helping me out during the games, shouting out those answers. I truly couldn't have done it without you guys. Now, the funny thing is, today we're learning about words and our game was about unscrambling words. But today we're learning about how we need to be responsible with our words. So let's take a look at our Bible story video today. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 29. There's an old saying you might have heard before. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Yeah, on the surface, that makes sense. I mean, you drop a heavy rock on my leg, I might end up with a big cast, but you yell at me and I don't even get a scratch, right? Well, it's a little more complicated than that, as we're about to discover in a letter from the Apostle Paul to the church in Ephesus. Uh, let's see. What are the most important things they need to know? Paul had spent years teaching the church in Ephesus, but now he was in prison. So he wanted to remind the Ephesians what God had done for them and how it should change the way they treated each other, especially when it came to their words. Hmm. Don't let any evil talk come out of your mouths. Say only what will help to build others up and meet their needs. Then what you say will help those who listen. Your words are strong and powerful. They can make an incredible impact on the people around you, whether that's for good or not. Let's imagine what it might look like if we could actually see our words. You totally rocked it on the field today. Aw, now those words were like a nice pat on the back. Words can be incredibly encouraging. Hey, I know you've been feeling kind of sad. I'm always here if you need someone to listen. Mmm, that was comforting. Just like a cozy blanket and warm cocoa. But we don't always use our wordy superpowers for good. Wow, did you even look in the mirror this morning? Ouch, oh, that burned. Things are getting messy here. <laughs> and if you get really angry, well, that's when your words can be real zingers. You are so mean, I wish you weren't my brother. Ooh, thoughtless words can shatter someone, break apart relationships. We all make mistakes with our words sometimes. We all end up hurting others with the things we say. But when that happens, sometimes we get a second chance to use our words wisely. I'm really, really sorry. That was an awful thing to say. Can you forgive me? Just like your words can hurt people and break relationships, Words can also be uh, the glue that puts them back together. Your words can actually bring healing. Think about it. Every single one of us has the power to make or break somebody else's day with just a few words. Whether you write it, speak it, type it, or shape it, your words are an incredible tool. You may not have the money to buy somebody an expensive gift, but the note you write or the encouraging thing you say in the hall may mean even more to them. So think about your words, each one. Weigh them carefully. Picture actually what they might look like when they come out of your mouth, a knife that cuts deep or an encouraging pat on the back. Remember, Paul believed our words are so important to God that he wrote about it from prison. Don't let any evil talk come out of your mouths. Say only what will help to build others up and meet their needs. Then what you say will help those who listen. Today's Bible story reminded us that our words are really powerful. 
Our words have the power to make someone feel really, really good, and they also have the power to make someone feel not so good, make them feel a little bit yucky inside. Now, I don't know about you, but I remember the words that people say to me, and I'm sure you remember the words people say to you. And what's important is when we realize that we've messed up with our words and maybe we've said something hurtful to someone, that we use words like, I'm sorry, words like, I was wrong, and asking for forgiveness, saying, please forgive me, I'm sorry that I hurt you with my words. Sometimes when we get angry or we get upset, it's really easy to say words that are hurtful, but when you get angry or upset, take a deep breath and count to 10 before you say anything. I know that really helps me not say something that is really hurtful to somebody else and helps me think about what I'm gonna say before I even say it. Now, today we read a Bible verse in our Bible story and it was from Paul. He was writing to the Ephesians and it's actually found in Ephesians 4 verse 29. It says, when you talk, do not say harmful things, but say what people need, words that will help others become stronger. Then what you say will help those who listen to you. See, what Paul is saying here is that we have a responsibility with our words. We can't necessarily control other people, but we control the words that come out of our mouth. And when we speak words, we need to be making sure that we're speaking words that build other people up. And we need to make sure that we're using our words wisely. That's our main point today, that we're using our words wisely. You know, I actually have a really cool way to show you guys the power of your words. Just let me grab it. So with me here, I have some toothpaste. Now let's pretend that your words are like the toothpaste inside this container. Now let's pretend today you're talking to lots of people. Maybe you talk to your teacher, maybe you talk to your friends, you talk to your mom and your, and your brothers and your sisters and all those different kinds of people. And you talk and you talk and you talk. And it's great to talk. I love talking to people. I love laughing with people. But the thing about words is, once you've said them, you, you can't take them back. It would be like trying to put all of this toothpaste back into the container. I'm never gonna be able to put this toothpaste back into the container. And just like that, it's not easy. And actually you can't take back words once you've said them. But like I said before, one thing we can do is ask for forgiveness and say, you know, I'm sorry I said that. Can I please have forgiveness? And then think twice before we say words again. Now, our words are powerful, so we need to be wise with our words. Can you guys bow your heads and pray with me? God, thank you for loving us and always being there to help us. Please give us wisdom to choose words carefully. We want the things we say to build other people up and to encourage them. When we mess up, please give us the courage to ask for forgiveness and say we're sorry. And thank you for always forgiving us when we mess up. Help us use our words wisely. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, today we've been talking a lot about how our words are powerful and how we need to use our words wisely. And something that's really cool is God actually gave you the power to use your words. And if this is your first time hearing about God, and maybe even your first time hearing about Jesus, I wanna tell you something really important. God loves you so unbelievably much. The biggest number you can think of, God loves you more than that. And God actually wants to have a relationship with you. But there's a problem. See, the bad things that we do called sin, they separated us from having a relationship with God. They separated us from getting to know Him. But the best part is God fixed this problem. God sent his only son, Jesus, here to the world. And when he sent Jesus here to the world, Jesus lived as a man and he did so many amazing things, but Jesus had to die. And when Jesus died, he forgave us for all of the bad things we've ever done called sin. And he also made it possible for us to have a relationship with God because he removed that sin. When Jesus died, he rose again and came back to life. And that is so amazing. Now, all you need to do to have a relationship with God and get to know him is just say that you believe that Jesus died and rose again to save you from your sins and that you want to have a relationship with God. 
You know, God has had a plan for you even before you were born. God placed so many special gifts and talents inside of you, and he wants to help you through life to show you all of your gifts and all of your talents and show you the amazing plan he has for your life. So if you want to start a relationship with God, all you have to do is say this prayer that we're going to pray in a few minutes after me. And God comes and he'll never leave you. He'll be with you forever. You'll never, ever be alone. So if this is something that you would like to do, I'm going to ask that you just repeat these words after me. So can you bow your heads, close your eyes, and repeat after me? Can you say, Dear Jesus, I want you to come into my life. I believe in you. Please forgive me. Help me to grow every day and be more like you. Thank you for everything you've done for me. In Jesus' name, amen. That is so awesome. If you just made that decision, I wish that I could give you a high five and a hug. There is a party happening in heaven because you just made that decision. Welcome to the family of God. Now, if you made that decision and you would like a Bible, you can get an adult to help you or you can email us here at kids at springschurch.com or you can reach out to us on one of our social media platforms. We would love to get you a Bible and to say congratulations because we're so excited that you've joined our family. Now, I've had so much fun hanging out with you guys and playing the last game, learning about responsibility. If you guys have any questions at all about the lesson today, or maybe you just have questions in general, questions about heaven, questions about God, you can email us or you can ask an adult for help to email us or reach out to us on social media because I would love to hear from you guys and I would love to answer any of your guys' questions. All right, well, I'll see you guys back here next week. Bye guys.